Before the music begins, Frogfest would like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, Bigani, and Gaina First Nations, the Sutina First Nation, and the Stony Nakoda, including the Shiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We are grateful to be here.
You're watching the Live Sessions Project, hosted by the Frogfest Music and Art Society, made possible with funding from Factor Canada and the Calgary Arts Development. We've assembled an alumni crew from Frogfest's past, including Matt Cookson, Phil Jukes, and Hans Grossman behind the cameras, and Pat Polardi mixing the audio. Uh, this session is hosted by Park by Sidewalk Citizen. It's a restaurant in Central Memorial Park. Um, as you can see, it's gorgeous, beautiful atmosphere, delicious food. If you've never been, check it out. They're hoping to host more live events um, and even make the space available for projects like this one. So keep your eyes on their social media. This session will showcase She Bear and the Hibernation. Enjoy.
We'd love to know about how she bear and the hibernation was formed. Uh, well, uh, she bear started off as kind of a solo project. Um, so I, I played with a rock band previously called the sweets and, um, I felt this urge to sing something that was softer and, and kind of be able to utilize my vocals a little bit more. Um, so that's kind of where the she bear songs evolved from. And, uh, and then over time, I, uh, I wanted to bring a couple buds on board <laughs> and, uh, and fill the band out. Um, yeah, so we got together a little bit before COVID and, uh, and then really kind of like dove into the songwriting process and everything during that time. And, and uh, that's where we kind of melded and everything kind of came together. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Tell us about your songwriting process. Did you find that the pandemic shaped it in any way? Um, well, yeah, I, a lot of the songs I, I had created pre-pandemic. Um, but yeah, I guess definitely there was a lot of things that happened during COVID um, and during the pandemic that, uh, like in my personal life, that added to the creation of some new songs. Um, so it, it definitely impacted our, our newest set of songs that are coming out. So yeah, like one song in particular, Cycles, um, kind of goes over like um, being stuck in the same cycle over and over again. Relatable. <laughs> Relatable, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and then the song we performed tonight, which then kind of came out of uh, some personal stuff that happened during the pandemic. So yeah. So I guess it did. <laughs> totally. I mean, it sounded great. <laughs> I feel like we were sitting on songs. It's weird during COVID if you're sitting on something because, like, you know, maybe more would have come out if if we'd had time to, like, um, play shows. But if you're just sitting on songs for three years, then you're waiting for a chance to, like, get them out there somehow. Mm -hmm. But I think it did offer us the opportunity to, um, like, we spent a lot of time together um, jamming throughout the pandemic, and we just got to know each other in, like, a really deep way, and we both went through, well, all of us went through some some intense personal stuff, and we were able to just uh, uh, deepen our emotional connection, and I think that that, I don't know, that's impacted our ability to play together and feel comfortable and and the process of songwriting yeah. also yeah absolutely so, i also yeah. okay sorry i'm now I'm, now i'm gonna go with please this. go yeah. please go <laughs> i feel like again like there's time to work on things so like claudia had recorded some of those songs already but we just like had some time to experiment and play because it just <laughs> was what it was and like that um, probably shaped the way that we will be able to write in the future a little bit more mm -hmm. as opposed to just being like, this is what's happening and this is what we're doing and now we're going with it and now we're writing new songs. Like, yeah, it's like, I feel like it's it time to go in a little more introspective and take your time. Yeah, we built yeah. a solid foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As well as most of those most of those jam sessions earlier were mostly half therapy sessions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, pure therapy, like talking therapy and then like playing. Playing it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did the venue shutdowns of the past couple years affect your guys' relationship to playing with a live audience? Um, yeah, I think it like just created this uh, little bit of a lull because you didn't know when things were going to reopen like it kept seeming like it was going to be in two months and, and you're like okay well I'll just take this little break from music and then I'll be back on it in two months and then it like drags on and then you don't know how long it's dragging on and then your morale kind of goes down mm -hmm. a bit so uh yeah I think it um I think it impacted that aspect of just the energy that you get from playing shows mm -hmm. um for me personally when we kind of started out playing again it's super exciting to to get back into it um 
but I definitely felt awkward in the social aspect. Like I completely forgot how to how to mingle and talk to people, <laughs> like <laughs> communicate effectively. So, <laughs> um, so that was a relearning process. But, I but it definitely, I I think for me, it felt good to get back into being able to prepare for shows, and I think it's made us, um, it's challenged us, and, and made us better as a group. So. Yeah. <laughs> I was reflecting on before we did this session how suitable the band name is, She Bear and the Hibernation, because you literally formed and wrote your songs in hibernation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we, as Frog Fest Music and Arts Society, also came out of hibernation. We had, I think, half of our board was new members, very rusty, um, but just went for it planned the festival in 2022 as soon as things were a go um and so I was thinking about how perfect it was that you played Frog Fest um can you speak to that experience at all of like coming out of hibernation to play a festival was that our first show out of hibernation too yeah, yeah it was yeah I was also just like speaking to it before like Caitlin we hadn't played prior to like COVID with Claudia, right? So, like, the question about um, how was it coming out of COVID, like, we'd been a band for three years, and, like, <laughs> you know, like, Frog Fest was this weird thing, because, like, we'd been a band for three years, and we'd never played a show together. Like, there was, like, yeah. a little bit of pressure to be something, like, but also Frog Fest was probably the perfect yeah. space to to do that so yeah so uh, welcoming definitely. and like such an accepting environment and i don't know i, I had an amazing time yeah yeah, yeah. me as well i think we yeah it's had like an the awesome perfect time first show for us yeah. To play. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and really kind of kicked things off for us so mm, it's true so, and it's like it's a very uh, welcoming broadcast mm -hmm. community so it's awesome that is awesome. And your set was amazing. Mm -hmm. It just it felt perfect. And it feels perfect that we're doing these live sessions together with you, too. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, no. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>